All right, so, so far what we have spoken about is um, uh, Azure Backup for virtual machines and um, uh, Azure SQL databases and um, how do you configure backups and how do you troubleshoot the backup failures? How do you monitor the backup failures? How do you use logic apps and log analytics workspace to uh, monitor the backup jobs? and little bit about um, custo queries, right? Today we will talk about the uh, Azure files and folders backup. If you have an on-premises server and you want to backup the specific files and folders, what process you have to follow and how do you trigger the backup and uh, how do you perform the recovery options? In case of the backup failed, what are the logs you have to refer and uh, yeah, so once we completed that part, if we get time, I'm going to talk about overall Azure backup as a solution on the Azure and uh, what you can do at a high level and what kind of questions you get with respect to the Azure backup and how we can answer those questions. If I was the candidate, how I'm going to answer those questions to the interviewer Right? Maybe if somebody, any client come to me and ask these questions, how I'm going to answer them, okay? So if I couldn't complete that today, maybe in the next session, we'll try to discuss about that, okay? So talking about the Azure Files and Folders Backup, um, taking an example here. So let's say you have a server running on on-premises data center. Okay, the server can be a file server, probably any 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 other server which is a little bit of critical. Okay, assuming this is your server running on on-premises data center, or probably a server running on Azure as a virtual machine as well. Right, so it, it could be on-prem or or Azure as well. So wherever it is running, so if you have any critical uh, folder or a file um, that you want to, uh, maybe a, an entire volume, if you want to configure uh, backup for them, you can use the Mars agent. So Microsoft Azure Recovery Services agent. So this agent is responsible for configure backing up the data and helping you with the recovery whenever it's needed. So in Azure side, you have the Azure subscription, okay? And within the Azure subscription, you are going to create a recovery services vault, okay? And uh, in the recovery service vault, make sure you set the right replication method all the time. It's not specific to the files and the folders backup. It is specific to, you know, your uh, recovery service vault, okay? LRS or GRS and you here you have an option to uh, choose like where your workloads are running. You have to specify the workloads are running on on-premises. And um, uh, so the solution, the workload type, you are going to say files and folders backup. So this Mars agent can also be used to backup the your Active Directory domain, uh, domain services um, system state backup as well, okay? So these options, we are going to choose it. So what we do is let's go ahead and create a recovery service vault in our Azure subscription. Then we'll show you how to configure this one. So I am on Azure portal and um, there are a few recovery service vault already created. I'm going to click on create a new recovery service vault for this example. And I'm going to say on-prem backup RG, okay? And uh, the name I'm going to say Mars Agent or Mars RSV, okay? We can choose East US or any other location. That's totally fine. So let us wait for this to complete. So in this example, um, I, I don't have any um, on-premises server, when I don't want to create an Azure VM also, I can do this installation in my laptop also, okay? So I can install this in my system. And um, if I have any critical folder that I want to backup, I can backup also. So that is also possible here. I will see if I can start doing that now. All right, so recovery service vault is created. And uh, if I go to this, this is the one which I created. 
um, Mars is nothing but Microsoft Azure Recovery Service Agent. And if you want to configure the backup, go to the backup and select uh, the option, the workload is running on on-premises. And I'm going to choose files and folders backup. And uh, if you have uh, Hyper-V, VMware workloads, or you know, on-premise SQL Server, SharePoint, Exchange Servers, um, if you have a domain controller, you want to back up the system state, you can choose this option. So bare metal recovery is for the um, physical servers. So the next step is to prepare the infrastructure. So as part of the prepare infrastructure um, uh, step, we are going to download this agent and this agent is supported for Windows Server and uh, Windows Client Operating System. We can always go back to the Azure uh, backup supported matrix. So the supported matrix will tell you what operating system is supported, what is not supported. And this is not for the Linux, by the way, so it's only for the Windows operating systems. It could be server or client operating system. So you have to download this first and copy to the server which you want to backup. So once you download this, you also have to download the uh, vault credentials. So we say vault credentials. So this will actually, you know, contains information about this recovery service vault. So when you install this uh, uh, recovery service agent, you have to register the server with the recovery service vault. During the process, you are going to upload this vault credentials. Okay, so once you register, and uh, in future, you know, any backup that is happening from that server. Uh, so it's going to send the data to this recovery service vault. Okay, so let's first download this uh, recovery service vault agent. And um, same time, I'm going to download the vault credentials also. So both are downloaded. I'm going to copy this to the our server. So I'm going to copy both of them to the server. So I'm inside the server. And uh, here I'm going to create a folder, let's say softwares. In the softwares, I'm going to upload this. So it may take some time because I'm copying from my local system to the server. Meanwhile, uh, I will try to open few uh, resources. So I'm going to open resource monitor so that um, we can see uh, what's happening when backup is triggered, what services are running, how the communication is happening to the backend Azure services. And we'll also try to open the services.msc to check uh, what service is going to be installed um, You know, after this. Um, agent is installation completed. So let's wait, it's uh, the copy is almost completed. So now if you look at this, uh, we have the installer copied successfully and the world credentials also. So sometimes what happens when you, uh, when you are working and when you try to implement this in your enterprise environment, so you might have a antivirus product, uh, could be a McAfee or Sentinel-1 or any other antivirus product. So that might uh, think this is the, uh, some unauthorized software. So unauthorized file, so it might try to delete automatically. So if you have such a, you know, uh, software is available. So make sure that you work with your antivirus team to uh, add exclusions to for the softwares. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this for now. So I'm going to run as administrator. So there are a few prerequisites. I think, you know, every Windows Server 2016 or, you know, 2012 R2 Evo will have this um, latest um, um, .NET framework installed. So we don't see any problem. Uh, if you see any problems, it will give you an error message. You can download them or, you know, if, you, if your server is going through patching, so it will automatically have those uh, um, .NET framework installed. 
so we are at the installation page. Um, so this is the settings uh, that you see here. So first one is the installation folder. The other one is the cache location. So installation folder is where you are going to specify where this tool has to be installed. So if you have any additional disk attached to your virtual machine or a server, try to select that so that you can save some uh, space in the operating system disk. And the other one is a cache location. So this is the location, uh, you know, where um, the encryption and you know data compression uh, all such operations happens within this folder let's say you are uh, trying to copy uh, uh, let's say one uh, 100 gb of a folder and what it does so first the file will be copied to this folder and this is where it perform the encryption and you know compression whatever necessary steps that it has to perform before it upload the data to the azure uh, recovery service vault storage account so it perform all the operations here so which means so you this folder whatever the directory you're choosing that should have enough space to perform this operation so if you if you are backing up 100 gigabytes of data, so at least 5% of that 100 GB uh, space should be available in the drive that you're choosing. You know, otherwise, you know, the backup might fail and you might you will definitely get an error message that clearly tells you that there is a space issue on the scratch location. They say the terminology is a scratch location or a cache location or a scratch folder. Okay, so it's important um, to consider it. So going to the next, in case if you have any proxy where you know outbound communication from your organization is going through the proxy, then ensure that you specify the proxy settings. If you don't have any proxy that is blocking, you can just set to next and install it. So this recommended to use the uh, Microsoft update. When you select this, automatically this agent, uh, you know, will be up to date with the latest version of the Mars agent. Okay, I'm going to install it. So it looks like the installation is successful. And you can see here, the Microsoft Azure backup is available. Let us launch this one. So once the tool is installed, I think there is some error. Probably the installation was not completed. Let's uh, close this and launch it again. Okay, this seems to be fine. Let's go to control panel and validate. Okay, this is installed and um, you can see the latest version of the agent and it's successful. So the next thing, uh, error starting this agent setup wizard could be some issue, let's see. So the next thing is to register the server. Uh, as I said, we have to register this server with the vault credentials. Click next and try to browse it. So let's go to the directory where we have this um, software copied. And next. So this is also a very, very important uh, thing that you have to remember, guys. Um, passphrases are very, very important uh, when it comes to the Mars agent backup. Using this passphrase, this tool is going to encrypt the data before it upload to the Azure backend storage. Okay, so which means when you try to recover the data, right, the decryption has to happen. If you don't have this passphrase, so you cannot recover the data. If it is the same server, so you're recovering, it may not ask you all the time. But in case if you're trying to recover the data to another server, right, so that during that time, it might ask you for the passphrase. So if you lose this passphrase or, you know, if you don't have the passphrase, you cannot recover the data. Data. Even Microsoft cannot help you to recover because these are the encryption keys in simple words, right? So Microsoft cannot store this encryption keys as per the data compliance. So it's important that you store um, this passphrase in a secure location, like you have Azure Key Vault service where you can copy these keys in a secure location there. Probably if, if you have any other tools where you want to copy these keys, you can also follow that, right? It's important. 
when nobody can help you. So there are many situations, you know, you might come across uh, where server has been compromised, you know, um, affected by ransomware attack. So during that time, you cannot log into the server. So your IT team might say, okay, since it has a backup, let's create a new server and try to restore the data from the backup, right? During that time, it will ask you for the passphrase. If you store the passphrase in the same server, right? And if you have not stored in any other location, so since the server already compromised, you cannot log into the server and you cannot see the passphrase, right? So that is the reason, you know, we have to have a multiple copies of this one. So I'm going to store it in a um, one of the folder, which we have it because it is for testing. So I don't need to worry much. I can just uh, store it in local system. Okay. But when it comes to the production, or you know, real IT organizations, it's better to store it in a secure location, have multiple copies of this passphrase in a secure location. So this process may take a few seconds. Let's wait for this to complete. All right, so the registration with the recovery service vault is completed and it's giving you a warning saying that don't store this locally, store it some other places. Okay, so let's close this now. Now you have an option to schedule the backup. This is where you are going to configure the backup for a specific folder or set of volumes. So I'm going to say schedule backup. So we have to create a backup policy and based on the policy, it's going to trigger the backup. So first thing is to select the backup items, click on add items. So I have one in C drive. So if you go to this data folder, there are multiple folders I copied for testing purpose. So I'm going to copy this data first. So this data will be copied to the Azure backend storage account. So we also call this process a backup. So first backup will be full backup and uh, uh, any next backup that is gonna happen, it's going to be incremental backup. There's no differential backup concept here. It's going to be a incremental backup. In case if you want to add any exclusions, you know, for a specific uh, patterns, specific uh, folders or files, you can go with the exclusion settings. So I'll click next here. And the good thing with the uh, March agent backup is you have, uh, you can back up three times in a day, okay? So if you want to configure weekly, weekly also fine, but in a day you can have a three days in a, three days. So this is a backup schedule. I'll go with the once in a day. And uh, retention, you can specify how long you want to retain the data, monthly or weekly or yearly retention. I'll go with the default option, like, you know, 180 days, that should be fine. Click next here and uh, transfer the data over the network. This is the option we are going to follow uh, because um, it's a small set of data and uh, I have enough bandwidth, so I don't need to go with the offline transfer. If it is an offline transfer, you have a solution available here. You have the Azure data box disk and uh, you can also your, use your own disk, copy the data and transfer it to the, or courier the disk to the Azure data center and Microsoft team will copy the data to the specific storage account in the backend. That's called offline process, okay? So we are going to use the online process, transfer over the network click next and finish the configuration. So this is basically, we are uh, scheduling the backup policy. Okay, backup policy is completed and it's successful. The next thing is based on the policy time that you specified, the backup will be triggered. So um, if I want to trigger the manual backup, I can do it right away. I can click on backup now so that uh, it will trigger the backup. So before that, let us check the services. So if I go to Microsoft Azure, um, recovery service agent, there should be one service that should be available here. Microsoft, it's not showing up here. Let me see if I have Azure site recovery, Azure recovery service agent. I just did a refresh here. Now it is showing up here. 
Microsoft Azure Recovery Service Agent. That is the serv this is the service that has to be the running status for your backup to be successfully working. And um, if I double click on this, and you see the service name is OB Engine, and uh, you can see the path. This is the path where we uh, install this agent, and you can see the binary name or cbengine.exe. If I go to the resources, resource monitor, and uh, go to the network here. When I start the backup, so you will expect this service or you know the cbn.exe uh, service uh, will be active here and that will try to transfer the data to the Azure uh, backend service. Okay, that will try to see when we trigger the backup. So you will sometimes see it's uh, disappearing or appearing. So let's do one thing. Let's go ahead and trigger the manual backup. So I'm going to close this one. Open the resource monitor once again. Okay, so now I'm going to trigger the manual backup. So I'm triggering only files and folder backup. System state is not available because this is not a domain controller. So I'm going to click next here. And uh, it is asking you, since it is a manual backup, it will ask you how long you want to retain the data. If it is a scheduled backup, you know, you it, will, it won't ask you, I mean, it won't show up this console even, right? So by default, it is taking one month. So that's fine with us. And now I click on backup. You will see the different stages it goes through. Um, it is taking the snapshot of the volume and uh, later it will try to transfer the data to the backup service. So you can see here, Repairing the storage. You can see the description here and here as well. And I will go back to this one. Select the cbn.exe. You can see the it's sending some data and receiving some responses. And um, um, you can see the address, right? Where it is sending. It's trying to communicate to the public IP address. And this is a uh, IP addresses of uh, Azure uh, backend uh, services. So you can see the remote address. What is the remote address to where it is trying to communicate? What is the local address and which port it is trying to communicate as well? Okay, what is the latency? So in case if somebody says the backup is not happening, so this is where we just come here and start looking at, okay, um, whether it is sending or not, is there something happening, some progress happening or not, all these things. So right now it is generating the metadata information, preparing the metadata VHD. So some process it it, it follow um, and uh, it trigger the backup automatically. So the next step will be like transferring data to the Azure. It's our internal process that is actually is, is preparing. So let's wait for this to complete. Since it has like some less data, so it won't take much time, I'm hoping. And we'll also go to program files and the Microsoft Azure Recovery Service Agent. And uh, we'll try to open the scratch folder and if I go to VHDs, right, this is where you will see that files. Okay, initially it will copy here, then try to upload to the Azure backend service. So all the encryption process, everything will happen here. And within this, you see, within the scratch folder, you see a file online backup.kek, which is nothing but a key encryption key, right? So it's a, a encryption key file. So using this, the backup will be encrypted. So that's uh, if you delete this file, the backup will fail. So we shouldn't delete this anything. Now data transfer is in progress, guys. You see how much it is sending. Sending bytes, you can see, right? It's increased. So far it just like KB is so like 102 for KB, less than uh, one, one MB, right? So whatever you see is in bytes. Um, I think it was in less than one KB also. Now it is going in, in MB. Whatever the data we have, it's trying to upload it, okay? So this will be uploaded. It's almost completed. Data transfer is completed, which is good. And uh, checksums, file validations, everything happens in this scratch folder, okay? So there's one more thing that you have to remember is uh, temp folder. In the temp folder, you will see CB engine uh, logs. 
the Microsoft Azure Recovery Service Agent or CBNN.exe, right? It writes every action that is it is performing, let's say preparing storage, taking snapshot, everything will be written here. In case if there are any errors, you can just try to open this one and open with the notepad and try to read in case if there are any failures. So this, this log will tell you, right? So you can just open this, do control F and search with the error failures. So it will give you everything, okay? So entire process, if you really want to understand, you can also read this, okay? So you set K, K file, all those things, right? So this is, this all things happens and you can learn the process also. Now the backup is completed and this is where you check if there are any failure logs and they are, the way you have to validate is this one. You come here and select the CBN or TXE and see how it is working and ensure that services are running fine, right? This is one thing you have to check. And if there's something called event viewer, I, I believe, you know, if you go to the system logs um, under the Windows log section, application logs, so you'll be able to see some uh, information in case if there are any failures. And um, I think it should be one, yeah. So there's one more here. Uh, but yeah, this is not for uh, uh, this one. This is for the replication. So you cannot refer this, but um, you can refer the application logs. Even it's created one for one for a couple of logs here, but most of the times you can go to application logs. In case if there are any failures, you will be able to see them here. If you remember while launching this um, recovery service agent, so we see some errors. Um, so it's giving some information there, here, so this one. Okay, so this is how you uh, start uh, looking at the errors and start troubleshooting as well. And um, now if I go back to this, uh, it's completed, so around one, one, one GB data it is transferred, which is good. Now, if you check here, and uh, view details, you can see it's completed. In case if there are any errors, you will see uh, another tab that will be created here. It says error. In the error, it will give you the clear description on why it is failed, okay? And um, you see last backup is successful. When is the next backup? And total number of backups, what is the latest copy? What is the oldest copy? And all the details you can see here, okay? And uh, if you want to change the retention, you can change. It. So all these things you can modify. Now, let's say you got a situation, you have to perform the recovery. That's when you go to the recover data option. Okay. So if, it, if the original server is working fine, then this is fine. You can go with the, you know, restore to the same server. In case if you want to restore to another server, whatever the server you're choosing, that server has to be registered with the Azure uh, Recovery Service Vault. So it has to be registered with the same uh, Recovery Service Vault of the original server. Okay. So that's where we will download the vault credential and register the server and later in the next stage, right? Let's say if I take an example, I'll try to upload this uh, same credentials file. I'm not sure whether it will allow or not. We'll see if we can use this. Go to the next one. No backup servers found. Okay. Yeah. So since it is like we are using the existing ones, it's giving an error. That's fine, we can ignore. But in the next stage, right, it will ask you for the passphrase. If you don't have the passphrase, that's where you are blocked. Though you have been using the backup solution for, let's say, two to three years, and you are paying the hundred thousands of dollars to Microsoft to for the backup. So if you just lose the passphrase, you, you, whatever the investment you put, it's going to be lost. So that's why I'm repeating again, the passphrase, you, you should maintain it in a secure location. Don't delete them and don't uh, lose them. Okay. Now I'm going to restore to the same server, click on next. And you can do the individual files and folders backup or entire volume volume recovery. And um, if you have a system state backup, you can go with system state. But right now we don't have system state. And I'll go with the individual files and folders. 
and click on next. So this is where it will tell you uh, if you have uh, multiple volumes that you have backed up, it will show you C volume, E volume, you know, whatever the volumes. So right now I only back up the data from C volume and uh, you see the dates which are in bold, which means on these days you have the recovery point. And if you have multiple recovery points in a day, you'll be able to see the time as well. Okay, since it is a first backup and I trigger it manually, I only have one backup here and one re re recovery point. So once you select this one, you just click on mount it. So it's going to mount the volume to your uh, C, C drive um, as a network file share. You will be able to open that and try to copy it. So let's open the resource monitor once again and see what's going to happen. So same service cbn.exe is uh, responsible for this process as well. And let us see what's happening here. What ports it's trying to communicate. Now you should see receiving is high. It's working on 443 and uh, any other ports 3260. Okay. In your system 3260. Um, has to be allowed if it is not allowed so it might back a uh, restore might fail and you see it's a uh, receiving byte should be higher than the sending bytes because we are receiving data from the uh, cloud environment cloud storage okay and uh, let us see the status it's completed Okay, the recovery is completed and uh, it is mounted the volume to our C drive. You can see here it's mounted and um, what you can do is you can just browse from here directly or just uh, open this from here also. Open the data folder and uh, you should be able to open all the files, copy the required folder or a file to the end uh, paste it in the target folder or file. And once you're done with the recovery operation, just simply click on unmount. When you click on unmount, it's going to be disappeared. Okay, that is disappeared now. Which with that process, the recovery process is completed. You are able to recover the data from the backup without any issues. So that's what the recovery. So we did a backup operation, we did a recovery operation. Right. So if you want to manage the backup, this is the only console that you are going to use it. If you go back to the Azure portal, you don't see anything here. OK, um, you don't see much information. So what we can do, we can go to the backup items. You see a backup agent available here. And in this backup agent, you don't see much information. You cannot have much control. You cannot trigger the backup. You cannot perform the recovery. So everything has to be happened from the within the server console itself, okay? And um, if I go to the backup infrastructure here, and uh, you can see Azure backup agent is available. So this is the server name and the agent version. If I want to uh, delete it, I can delete it, okay? And uh, if I go to backup management server, uh, protected servers, you can st still see from here also, the same information. Okay, so this is about the Azure files and folders backup and uh, how we um, back up the on-premises files and folders and how do we perform the recovery and in case if there is an issue, which logs you have to refer and uh, how do you monitor the backup job process, recovery job process, what ports to be enabled and this is this entire thing about the on-premises backup solution. So with this, I think we are pretty much covered the each and every um, scenario, like most common scenarios that you implement in the enterprise cloud environment. So we couldn't implement a few of them like SAP HANA workload backup and other things because we don't have the environment and we, it's really difficult to set up that environment, right? So, so with this, I think we are good with the backup solution. So let us take some time to have a quick recap of what we have learned in the Azure backup. And uh, it's like a quick overview of uh, Azure backup solution. What it, What is Azure backup solution? What are its capabilities? What it can do? And what kind of questions your customer might ask or maybe interviewers might ask and how do we answer them? Okay, all right. Okay, so um, talking about the Azure backup solution, um, it's one of the um, um, 
component of business continuity and disaster recovery solution offered by Microsoft. So Microsoft uh, offering this business continuity and disaster recovery solution as a recovery services vault. So recovery service vault have two things. One is Azure backup and another, another one is Azure site recovery. So with the Azure backup, you can back up the Azure workloads and on-premises workloads. When it comes to the Azure workloads, the workloads can be your virtual machines running on Azure, you take the entire VM backup. When I say VM backup, the disk which are associated with the virtual machine will be banged up on a daily basis based on the schedule that you configure. Similarly, if you have a SQL databases running on an Azure virtual machine, when those databases backup also can be possible with the recovery service vault. If you have an Azure storage account with the Azure file share service enabled, you can use the Azure backup solution to the backup those uh, file shares. Likewise you, have, likewise, you have Azure SAP HANA workloads and few other scenarios. If it is an on-premises uh, uh, solution you want to implement it, you, if you are server running on a, a Hyper-V virtual machines or a VMware virtual machines, or if it is running on a physical server, it could be a SQL application, it could be a SharePoint server, it can be any server, right? So you can use the Azure Recovery Service Vault uh, uh, component to back up those uh, servers. If it is a files and folders backup or you know uh, system, Active Directory system state, you can use the Mars agent, which is the Microsoft Azure Recovery Service agent. Other than these two scenarios, if you have any other server, you can use the um, Azure backup server. We say Microsoft Azure backup server map solution. Okay, so these are the backup capabilities and uh, you know, at the same time, it, it has a very good features to perform the recovery operations. If it is the Azure virtual machine, so you can restore the VM as a, uh, restore the VM from the backup and create a new virtual machine and we have an option and you can recover them as a disk so that you can use the disk to create a new virtual machine with the extended capabilities like choosing the availability set, availability zone, your uh, you know virtual network or any other you know capabilities or features that you want to attach it, you can attach it with the help of the restore disk. Even uh, with the restore disk, you can swap uh, the disk with the um, you know, problematic virtual machines. You can swap the only OS disk, or maybe you want to attach the existing, attach the DD disk also possible with the uh, re recovering the disk. There is another option: replace the disk. Replace the disk basically replace the entire uh, uh, disk of your virtual machine. So whatever the disk it had uh, when it when the backup was triggered. So that includes the OS disk and data disk, it will be swapped automatically or replaced automatically. So those are the capabilities for the uh, Azure virtual machine uh, recovery using the Azure backup solution. You have the similarly for the databases. Database you can uh, restore to the same location or you know, uh, repl uh, restore the database to the another location, restore the database as a file. So you have same thing for the storage account and you have same same solutions for the on-premises workloads as well. So you can use Azure backup solution to perform the backup and recovery. And uh, so with this solution, you know, it's a centralized solution, right? So you don't need to set up any uh, server to uh, manage this backup solution. So the infrastructure is by being managed by Microsoft in the backend. You don't need to um, create a server, install any third party tools like you see Commvault. You have to have a master server. You have to have another server which, uh, you know, takes care of the communication with the you know client uh, client applications so those many things will be there but here you are getting this solution as a pass component so you don't manage anything so they are giving you a service you just enable this feature and rest of the things are taken care by microsoft you don't need to manage the you know storage solution as well microsoft will take care of the storage solution so that's the beauty of this recovery service world and if you the good thing is you know um, centralized monitoring solution. The Azure Backup or Recovery Service Vault have an integration to, uh, you know, have a feasibility to integrate the uh, logs with the different solutions. Let's say you want to monitor the backup jobs through centralized monitoring solution offered by Azure, which is the Log Analytics Workspace. You can integrate with the existing um, Log Analytics Workspace. So you stream the data to the log analytics workspace. Later you create a, your, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, 
even interactive uh, dashboards through uh, you know workbooks in azure mountain solutions you can enable the uh, uh, integration with the logic apps and uh, enable automated emails or integrate with the system ticketing system tools and perform some automation for a regular backup failures right you have many things here and if you want to integrate or archive these logs to a storage account you can also it is also possible in case if you have uh, if you want to integrate with the other uh, monitoring solutions like uh, Splunk, any other ITSM tools, use use the Azure Event Hub to stream the logs to the, uh, you know, third-party tools, monitoring tools like Splunk or any other Zabbix, any other tools, right? So that is also possible here with the uh, monitoring solutions on the recovery service vault, all right? So this is one of the good thing that they have given multiple integration. Maybe you are a customer. You have been using Splunk for a while. You know, now you're moving to the cloud. So if you don't want to move out of Splunk, so using the uh, diagnostic setting option, you can just stream to the uh, Splunk via Azure Event Hubs. Now you want to go for Azure Native Services. You want to have a one centralized monitoring solution for entire all Azure workloads, all Azure services, then use the log analytics workspace to perform or stream the logs and create interactive dashboards. So that's the beauty of this you know, product. It has various options available, all right? So we talked about the uh, you know features, capabilities, and uh, how to configure and how to perform the restores. How, to, how do you monitor it? Right. So the another good thing with the Azure backup product, at least I would say, you know, out of all Microsoft Azure services, Azure backup team, Azure product team, Azure backup product team has actually put very good efforts. So whenever there's a backup failure, it gives you clear error message and it will give you clear instructions to fix the problem. And it's not the only one, right? They built a very good troubleshooting document also. So when customers see a problem for the backup failure and uh, what they want to do is they want to search that error message in the Google, right? When you search the error message in the Google, it is taking you to the Microsoft documentation where customer can see the same error code. So it feels or uh, gives the confidence to the customer that, okay, there, there is a solution for the failure, right? So then that, that is another, another good thing that they have done it. And moreover, when you're creating a, you know, support ticket with Microsoft for any backup failures, it will give you this self, uh, you know, resolvable documentation. So if I take an example here, uh, let's say your backup and the problem type, let's see. Uh, let us say uh, backup, Azure Virtual Machine backup example, backup failing with the guest agent issues. Go to the next. This is just a test here. Okay, and go into the next. It will give you the recommended solution. So this is another thing. So they gave uh, self-help documents so where customer can uh, resolve the issues by themselves. You see they're they giving some documentation. Um, these are the common errors that you also see when there's a backup failure. And the direct solution they're giving, it is taking you to the documentation. So this is the beauty of this product as well. So um, that's uh, other capabilities that Microsoft is offering, which you can explore it. Okay, so this is about the Azure backup solution, I would say overall, and um, the questions that you might see, right? Um, so the questions could be like, you know, uh, did you ever configure the backup? So you can say that, yes, I do configure the backup. We have um, multiple recovery service vault in our environment, and each recovery service vault has uh, virtual machine backup and uh, database backups and uh, you know on premises files and folders backup as well some couple of recovery service vault we have uh, file shares backup too right so let's say you can give an example let's say we have around 50 to 60 recovery service vault and um, so they are spread across our different uh, locations we have the workloads running in um, east to as a primary and uh, few of them in West Europe, few of them in Central India locations. So we, our environment is spread across three different locations and each location we have the recovery service world created and we are backing up the workloads. So we have approximately, you know, a hundred plus servers, probably, you know, I would say 120 precisely by virtual machine. And there we also have, um, 
you know, database backups as well. So each server, I mean, we have around like uh, 30 to 40 database servers and uh, each server have around minimum of, you know, 20 to 30 databases available, right? So we configure backup for the databases, we configure backup for the virtual machines. If it is a SQL server, we don't configure the virtual machine level backup because we only configure the database level backup. This is to save the cost and, you know, avoid any performance issues during the backup process. Right, so this is our current environment and um, away. So it is really difficult to go teach and every recovery service world to monitor the backup job status. So what we do, we stream all the logs to, uh, you know, one centralized log on text workspace. So we also built our, you know, dashboards where I can just, uh, my team can just go to, uh, you know, dashboard or a workbook and filter the failure jobs and start exploring it. And the dashboard also give us the compliance, like, you know, how many total VMs we have out of them, how many are being successfully backup, how many are failed, and in a given month, what is the overall compliance, 98% or 19 percentage. And if it is failed, uh, what is the error messages, you know, why it is being failed. So I can, that's kind of, uh, you know, interactive dashboard that, you know, that are built and a team can start reviewing it. If it's not only for the team, it's like for the entire like leadership team, if they want to come and check the, you know, uh, backup compliance for a specific set of customers that is also possible, okay? And uh, we also integrated this with the logic apps and the logic apps actually fetch the backup failures and uh, create an automatic ticket with the uh, ticketing tool and uh, the team will start looking at the uh, ticketing tool and uh, as soon as they log in and start fixing the backup failures. So as we see many backup failures, we try to automate the resolution. So we try to identify the common problems. Let's say the backup failures are happening because of the, um, you know, guest agent is not running. So we try to, uh, we are in the process of creating an automation solution where as soon as the backup is failed with this error code where agent is not running, so the script actually go inside the server and try to restart the agent and trigger the manual backup, right? And um, trigger the backup, custom backup. So that, you know, though there, there are failures, so, so this will, this process will try to uh, to resolve the problems. So these are the couple of capabilities what we have, right? So when somebody has asked you this question, if you are confident in explaining this level, that is more than enough. So you don't need to spend these many minutes to explain, but try to cover as much as possible, right? So the interviewer know that, okay, you have the solution, you know the solution, and you have some grip on the solution, right? So um, there could be another question, like, you know, what kind of errors you see when you are working on the backup? You can say that, so for the virtual machine, we, we see backups are failing because of the, you know, OS issues, right? So the virtual machine is not being uh, going through patching for a couple of days. And because of that, you know, the backup is not working. Sometimes antivirus is blocking the, you know, backup process. These are the couple of use cases, you know, server is experiencing the high performance issues because of the backup is not happening. These are the couple of use cases we can explain. And if it is database backup, you know, uh, if the database backup is configured, but all of a sudden, you know, DB team or, you know, application team deleted the database, but, you know, that is still not deleted in the Azure side. So because of that, we see failures. And sometimes we see uh, backup is failing because of some issue at a OS level. Uh, you know, waste performance issues or DB performance issues. So those are the couple of use cases you can give, right? So in such scenarios, you, you may fix it because of the documentation giving you clear information. Sometimes you might have to collaborate with the OS team, collaborate with the network team and uh, database team. So you can explain these use cases to them. So they are confident about the, you know, what you do it, right? So there could be questions like, okay, um, so, what are the recovery options we have it? So you can explain about the virtual machine restore or maybe disk restores, maybe replacing the existing servers. They might ask you which is the best solution for you. You can say, you know, always disk uh, restoring the disk is the best solution because when you restore the disk, it will restore all the disk and later you can choose which disk you want to swap it. So that's why, you know, we always go with the restore disk operation and you can always say that, you no, know, this is the process we are following it, right? In case if they say, okay, this is not a best solution, replacing disk is the best solution. If they say maybe that is the best solution, but you know, that's not being followed in your current organization, right? So you can always say that whatever you are following, 
you can explain and uh, if you think this is the best recommended method you can try to convince otherwise you can say okay you can explore it later right so that's about the recovery best practices and there could be questions like okay what is instant recovery point and um, what is a consistency methods application consistency recovery point crash consistency recovery point what is the difference between them right so majority of the questions comes from these areas and i think you are pretty much good as of now uh, nothing to worry much but if you go beyond let's say l3 level or more than that right there could be questions okay so you have a customer they are trying to move to the cloud and uh, so as part of this cloud journey they are one of the solution that you have to propose is the be business continuity solution so what is the solution that you are going to propose and why you have to why you are going to suggest this solution okay there could be questions so when it comes to the explanation maybe you have to say we need to understand the customer environment first okay what kind of solution customer is currently using it okay and um, are they going to deploy the resource on azure vm okay and um, if, if they are if it is going to be the azure vms and what kind of workload they are running is it a windows based operating system linux based operating system uh, are there any custom operating system custom images they are using it so based on that you can suggest a solution right if you have the information try to gather the you know inventory and say okay if it's a windows you are good azure backup can help you if it is a linux so majority of the linux flavors microsoft is supporting now if there are any other customized uh, operating systems all uh, right so that you have to review that's an optional that you can just uh, take a look right otherwise 90 percent of the workloads are supported by azure backup solution in case if they are using third-party solutions so you might have to compare the cost right if you need to implement that solution it's a commvault right if you need to implement commvault and the azure backup azure azure environment so what is the estimated cost okay and uh, how much efforts you have to put right when it comes to efforts how much manual work you have to put and how many backup engineers you needed and uh, how do you monitor those backup jobs do i need to introduce any new solution for monitoring uh, can i use the existing solution so all these capabilities pieces to pieces you know feature to feature comparison with the azure native backup solution you have to compare and come up with the outcome of it and try to present to the customer so if they somebody ask you okay how what is the solution you prefer uh, you, know, you cannot just simply say azure backup is solution right we have to also understand the customer mindset so what customer is actually uh, looking for it is it just maybe they already researched they know azure backup solution is the one of the best thing but you know they also might have thought okay we have been using commvault for a while so it's a change so it's a difficult to go for a quick change so there could be uh, some uh, thoughts that they think okay can we use the existing solution so when you do this detailed assessment you are confident your customer is confident and they are happy to go with the azure backup solution or a commvault or third party backup solution and so i think that's all you get from the uh, business continuity models right there could be one last question they might ask you okay, what is the process you are following uh, let's say if somebody asks you to trigger the manual backup what do you uh, what process you follow if somebody asks you to perform the restore what process you follow it and um, when do you trigger the manual backup when what are the scenarios where you perform the restore why did you perform the restore right so if what is the difference between the snap disk snapshot and you know backup snapshot in vmware i can do a snapshot within few seconds can i do the same things in the azure side these are the couple of questions they will try to understand and if you are going specifically for a, as a backup engineer or maybe a backup support engineer right there could be questions on these areas but otherwise you know nobody try to ask you in depth of uh, the Azure backup solution, right? Uh, they might be focusing on a virtual machine, networking components, and storage solutions, right? Backup or replication process, they, they will try to understand whether you, you are aware of the process, whether you know the solution, right, at a high level, okay? So that's all about the questions and Azure backup solutions. 
at a high level there could be different kind of questions might be coming it's all depends on the you know interview panel and the requirement they have it in case if you have any experience uh, in the past asking a different questions by the interviewers you can just let me know if you are not sure about the answer we'll try to learn together and uh, you know try to share with everybody all right thank you so much guys um, any questions feel free to let me know i'm happy to support you guys <laughs>